Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Sarah Luckert. And I'm Bethany Biggenhill. Here's your news now. Spring is around the corner and has left us with a snowless winter that has affected many businesses. Let's check in with Dr. Eric Malm to see what happened with the no snow winter. Oftentimes, students ask about the, the weather this winter, why it's so warm. I, I happen to like the warm weather. But uh, a lot of people ask whether this is because of global warming. And that's, that's kind of a tough question. Sometimes when people talk about global warming or hear people speak of global warming, it really sounds like a daunting thing because it really is global. And it really is, in some ways, daunting. Uh, at the same time, each of us as individuals can do things to have more of a, a positive impact on the environment. That can range from bicycling instead of driving to buying more environmentally friendly products. Uh, when you graduate and get electricity, you can choose to buy renewable energy instead of uh, electricity that's made with fossil fuels. So even though global warming is a very, very big topic, uh, it is something that each of us individually can do something about. Instead of lounging around like most Cabrini students this break, a group of Cabrini members went on a service trip to Appalachia. Let's see how it went. Project Appalachia is a spring break immersion trip sponsored by Campus Ministry. We go down to West Virginia for the week. We live in the local community. The organization that we work with is actually a Presbyterian organization. And they have a list of needs in the local community of people that need help with their homes, things like that. So a lot of the people there live in poverty. They, most, most places we work in are actually trailers. So we do a lot of demolition, construction, do a lot of drywall, do a lot of flooring. We've done plumbing and things like that. And then we actually live down there for the week. We live in um, a local church. And we live in, the students that go down there live in community, basically. So we hang out, we have reflection at night, we play games, we get to know each other, um, get to make good friends and then we actually one of the cool things about the trip is that we actually get to speak with the people that we're helping so when we go to these people's homes we actually get to know them we get to listen to their story which is an opportunity that they don't get a lot to get to tell their story your leaders they kind of plan the they plan the trip they plan the that we have a field trip one of the days that we go to so we we kind of look out look out and scout for what we can do during the week and we lead the reflections. We do all the basic logistical stuff leading up to the trip and on the trip. We lead the, there are meetings, there are weekly meetings this throughout the semester before we actually go. And we, where we give basic background information on the area and we put those together too. Uh, we clean up a lot of, a lot of times there's debris outside. So we go through and we clean up a lot of that. And then we work on the house inside. Uh, last year we fixed the kitchen and we just uh, cleaned up the, the floor, it was rotting. Com the floor was rotted out completely, so we just cleaned it up with a shovel and then we put the floor in and we put a new drywall. It doesn't look spectacular, it's not you know, overwhelmingly different, but it still makes a difference. It's still better than what they had before. If you're not doing anything over spring break, um, next year or the year afterwards or whenever. It's really a good experience to do at least once in your career as a student here. We went to West Virginia on March 4th, which was Sunday, and we came back on March 11th, Saturday. And we spent the week in Mount Hope, West Virginia. We worked in a man named Carl's trailer. It had just the week before we got there, actually, it had, it had suffered a fire. There was a lot of smoke damage throughout the house. so. There wasn't, when we went there, there actually wasn't any ceiling up anymore. The insulation was gone. So we put up insulation and we cut drywall and put it up on the ceiling. And we sealed a lot of the smoke damage on the walls and repainted and put up drywall. And there was one day that we took a field trip to the exhibition coal mine in Beckley where we actually got to see a real coal mine, what it looked like, and which was just really, really interesting. We had 16 people total. three three student leaders and two staff members and 11 students. Project Appalachia is just an awesome experience for anyone who's interested in service or just finding out about 
different ways of life, different cultures, and interested in the way poverty affects people within our country. Lower Merion Police recently reported an increase in disorderly conduct by young Bryn Mawr and Radnor residents. Earlier in the week, several men were arrested and charged with public intoxication and disorderly conduct on West Lancaster Avenue. Longtime Radnor residents blame the incidents on increasing number of college students in the area. College students now make up a third of the township and have been stirring up complaints. As for complaints, a suit was filed against the Eagles earlier this week on charges that the Lincoln Financial Field was careless in providing security for fans. According to the Philadelphia Inquirer, a Ryder University student claimed she was injured during a brawl among drunken fans near her seat. She contends that security evicted the intoxicated men, later let them back into the stadium. Eagles spokesman declined to comment on the suit. That was your trip around the block. Now let's go with Bethany for Across the Nation. Back-to-back -back school bus accidents occurred earlier this week in the Midwest. According to the Indianapolis Fire Department, a young child along with a bus driver were killed in the wreck. Ten other children were severely injured. The cause to the accident still remains unclear. While the next day in Missouri, at least 16 people were injured after a driver lost control and overturned on a highway. The driver of the bus was reportedly distracted by a child. Fortunately, no one was seriously injured. American exchange student Amanda Knox will return home for the first time in four years after she was wrongly accused of murder in Italy. An Italian appeals court overturned Knox's murder conviction in 2007, death of her roommate. Knox served four of her 26-year sentence in Italy. Knox is expected to release a book of her memoirs detailing the tragic experience. An out-of-control parent caused mayhem in Springfield, Massachusetts after his son lost his sixth grade basketball game in the Catholic Youth Organizational Finals. 34-year-old Timothy Forbes attacked the winning coach and then bit off a part of his ear. After knocking down several children, Forbes fled the scene and later turned himself in. He pleaded not guilty to assault and other charges. Forbes will face a hearing later on in this week. As for the coach, surgery fortunately reattached his ear. In other news, in Afghanistan after the burning of Qurans and the killing of two NATO officers, an American soldier killed 16 villagers in their homes earlier this week. The soldier allegedly left his base and walked to a village nearby where he went on a house-to-house -house rampage, killing nine women and three children out of 16 victims. The Afghan parliament demands the soldier be put on trial in Afghanistan. After investigating, officials believe he acted alone and his motives remain unclear. The soldier who has not yet been identified is in U.S. custody. A man abducted as a boy and featured in film, Coney 2012, recently spoke about his experience. Jacob McKay, now 21, says it's time to bring the Lord's resistant army leader, Joseph Coney, to justice. McKay was featured in the film that has renewed public interest in the capture of Coney. McKay was one of the few who now managed to escape. He is now studying law in Uganda's capital and strives for justice against Joseph Coney. China has recently given the United States and Barack Obama a hard time on the trading of goods. America, Japan, and the European Union have filed a case against China for restrictions on rare earth exports. These exports are crucial to the manufacture of high-tech products like hybrid cars and flat-screen televisions. It's the first World Trade Organization case to be filed jointly by three nations. China now holds 95% of the world's rare earth metals and has raised the prices. That was your trip around the world. Now let's go to Jimmy for this week's Tech Connection. It's officially here, and most of the rumors are right. The third generation iPad was unveiled at Apple's March 7th event. The most prominent new feature of the new iPad is the high resolution Retina display, turning 3.1 million pixels in the same 9.7 inch screen size, meaning the new iPad possesses a higher resolution than an HDTV. Also built in is the A5X chip providing quad core graphics, a 5 megapixel camera which enables 1080p video recording, and an ultra fast 4G LTE network connection option. The demand for pre orders of the new iPad have been off the charts, according to Apple, with just shipping estimates quickly being pushed out to two to three weeks. You can still wait in line and hope to snag one starting at 8 a.m. local time on Friday, March 16th. As for me, I pre ordered mine, and I should be getting it April 6th. I hope. Now let's go to Mary Kate for this week's sports update. For the first time in Cabrini's history, the Cabrini men's basketball team has gone to the NCAA Final Four. 
The Cavaliers advanced to meet Illinois Westland University in the national semifinal on Friday, March 16th. Let's take a look to see how the Cavs are preparing to make history. Uh, the unit. The unit, we've had a lot of open gyms and practices and many experiences together. Um, that's what we call ourselves, just because we're close um, with each other and we're like a family. And, uh, because we stand together through everything. Yes, I sacrificed a lot of my time for this weekend. But uh, as far as free time goes, I think we I think we give up quite a lot of free time. Gave up my whole spring break to stay here practicing. Then we traveled to Vermont with the team, practiced up there, won two games, and came back winners. The bus ride home was a lot of fun. The bus ride back was terrible. Uh, it was great times to be with the teammate for a long seven hour drive. Nobody likes to sit on a bus that long, but it was, makes it easier when you get the win. It feels good. It feels like we accomplished um, a lot. To be able to go to the Final Four is an awesome accomplishment in itself, um, but to go to the next level of the national championship would be great as well. Looking up to the Final Four, uh, we're very excited about our opportunities. We are very grateful for the opportunity. We're thankful for our fan base, our students, uh, all the people that traveled up to Middlebury this last week. It was, it was awesome. It was all part of the experience, and um, we just look forward to keeping it going the opportunities in front of us, so keeping focus, I really kind of leave up to them. You know, we, we make practices hard, we take everything as serious as we ever do, but them uh, coming in focused really is, is something they do on their own. Senior starts with senior leadership. I try to lead them on the floor and off the floor, keep our heads focused. We do have a very loose team, as you guys probably know from yeah. being around on campus. They're a pretty outgoing bunch, so we let them kind of stay within their own personality and uh, try not to keep them up tight as much as possible. I, Greg Zabel, and the unit will be taking the NCAA National Championship this weekend in Salem, Virginia. Everybody come to Virginia. Everybody. That's all I have for you this week. Be sure to tune in next week for the results of the NCAA tournament. Here's Holly with your weekly entertainment news. Hi, guys. It's Holly here with your entertainment news. Heather Morris, actress, singer, and dancer on the hit series Glee, is the most recent star to allegedly fall victim to the scandal of leaked nude photos. The woman in the photos reveals nearly everything in the webcam shots. It is unclear whether or not the woman in the photos is Morris, and her reps have yet to comment. Bobby Christina gave her first interview since her mother's death to Oprah Winfrey. Bobby Christina told Oprah how she is handling the death of her mother, Whitney Houston. Bobby Christina explained how she will try to carry on her mother's legacy. It is good to hear that Bobby is doing well. That's all I have for you this week. Be sure to tune in next week for entertainment news. Here's Melissa with this week's Person of the Week. Hi, I am Melissa Webb here in the bookstore, where Michelle Convoy makes sure that she provides the best customer service for faculty, staff, and Cabrini students. In the past seven years working at Cabrini Bookstore, I believe, as a manager, our number one focus in this bookstore should be customer service. In the beginning of each semester, the bookstore becomes very busy with many phone calls, online orders, and huge lines. So great customer service is key, making sure that students find the right books for classes. Without our customers, we don't actually even have a business. So my belief and what I instill in my employees is that as customer service representatives, we should be proactive, we should be approachable, and we should be responsive to all the needs that our customers might have. It could be as simple as answering a question for them or as intensive as special ordering something in they may need for a class, but our goal is to make our customers feel number one and that they're our priority the entire time that they're in our store. The bookstore also has a lot of supplies and Cabrini gear to offer. My associates actually get trained, so there's an extensive customer service training policy that we do, and it starts out with a basic intro. We should be greeting our customers as they enter the door. We should be answering our telephones in a certain amount of rings because we have to consider that not only is a customer somebody in our store, but a customer is somebody that's on the phone, a customer is somebody that orders on our website, and we have to make sure that we're paying attention and, and giving the attention that all customers need that we deal with on a daily basis. 
Thanks for watching this week. For Location, I'm Sarah Luckert. And I'm Bethany Biggenhill. Happy St. Paddy's Day. Be safe and we'll see you next week, Cabrini.